ready for another lesson. So yeah, what what do you guys? Quick question for you guys then: What do you think is your most watched movie? If you could pinpoint one, I know that's crazy difficult because it could be like a fucking. I know mine. Movie, I don't know, you know what I mean, or I don't know how accurate it'll be. Like if I had, if like I died and had like my post life stats, I don't know where it would actually be <laughs> on these stats. I like, like the I idea of that, bro. Close. Oh, yeah. I think about that all the time. I think about that all the time. What my post that's such stats. a. That's such a millennial gamer post, thing. Post life stats. <laughs> yeah, like how many steps did I take in my life? How many hours was I on the toilet? Like That's how so many funny. how much time did I spend sleeping? Your like KD. Is it actually my KD. Yo, speaking how of how many people that I accidentally give COVID to and killed? Like I just need to know. Like well, hopefully your KD's uh point oh. Yeah. <laughs> For what, the only time I ever hope my KD is negative. The guys I'm scared of are the ones that go completely positive. <laughs> they go uh, one. <laughs> they one kill one. everyone and Every don't time. die. <laughs> he's, he's immortal. Bro, who... Okay, now here's another question. Who has the highest KD? I'm sure you could find that out. Mm, I don't... That's too killed? dark. It's gotta be Genghis Khan, honestly. That's dark. It's probably... It's too dark? Okay. Yeah. It's I'm gonna search probably some of it. Out of it. We're talking about some horror stuff that. tonight, so sure we I'm are. Sure with dark. We are getting spooky. Who, I, I didn't even have to finish. Who has killed the most people in history? It, it auto corrected it. I feel like it's like grasshoppers. Or oh, something. but this is talking about serial killers. Oh, I want to know like people, people, germs. Oh. How many serial killers do you think you? Oh you wait, here we go. I found this. a little graph. Oh my lord! Do you guys want to try to guess who's in first? I have, I honestly have no idea, dude. Hitler. So I'm gonna waste time. That's actually a good guess. So this is by I will okay. So I will say this is which I, dictator can't. killed the most people. That's what oh. this graph I'm looking at is. It's gotta be Stalin. Stalin. Oh, what about Stalin, um, Stalin disappeared more people than anyone, right? Or who's, no, who's, no, like one of those. It's probably who's the uh, one guy, Alexander. Alexander the Great, isn't Alexander, Alexander the, Great? the Great? Yeah, but I don't think he's a dictator. So the problem um, with them. The problem is with Pol that Pot? is is it Pol Pot? No, no, those are just mass killings. It's gotta be Stalin. I like how serious I'm treating this. Yeah, what's the answer? I'm, like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm I treated it so seriously. I looked it up and made a little game out of it. Are you all right? So no, yeah, Nathaniel I meant the game. Stalin. <laughs> yeah, Nathaniel Singh, staying Stalin, Blake. Oh, that's tough. I guess I'd guess Alexander the Great, but I don't know how accurate that could be. Okay. I think Tyler said Hitler. Yeah, Tyler. Sticking with Hitler. Final answer. You're sticking with Hitler. Okay. The real answer, everybody, is Mao Zedong. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, there you go. That's All right, sad. let me give you this. Oh, yeah. My, my, old, 70, my, old, my old Don. 78 million people. Jesus. That's so, a, yeah. and then number two, Joseph Stalin, 23. Adolf Hitler, 17. 17 or, yeah, 17 million. Hmm. Then Leopold II of Belgium killed 15 million. Underrated. Yeah, um, Doesn't sure yeah, no one knew like came out of nowhere. Combo. Underrated dictator who killed a lot of people. <laughs> nah, it's uh the Belgians were actually horrific in Africa. Um yeah, yeah, they were when, oh the when, Congo, yeah, yeah. The rape of so uh, the uh, did they call it the rape of Cong the Congo? I don't know what yeah, they call it's, it. It's they kind went, of what's colloquially known and, as. Yeah, and yeah. they fucked shit up in there. Uh and then Hideki Tojo killed five million. He's from Fort from Fort basically during World War II, uh forty one to forty four. And then we have Ismaili Enver Pasha killed 2.5. What are we doing, like the top 10 here? <laughs> yeah, I, I found the top 10. Uh, Poi Pot list, is 1.7. For serious, say, yeah, I feel like Pol Pot's got to be on there. Yeah. Uh, Kim Il-sung killed 1.6. Uh, Me- oh, shit, this font is really small. Men- Mengistu, Hail Mary. Is it, like, the, is, uh... it like a, is it like a pyramid? Does it like get smaller? <laughs> 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 no, it's no, it's just getting further away from me, and I have bad. And it's a really it's a, small font, so it's, it's got to be like the the Rwanda genocide is got to be up there on one of those two. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know which one. Is. I could look. I mean, I could look these up, but I don't no, know which I'm not one that. Is up yeah. What was that? Uh, so what was everyone number ten. Hold up, number ten is Yakubu. <laughs> yeah, that's where you went from. Of one point one million. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. I will put so Jeremy Mao. Huh? I'm gonna put the link to this graphic in the show notes if anyone Shut wants to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll send it and I'll send it to you guys. 
Welcome to Back Row Band. <laughs> <laughs> episode, episode 15. Is that the start of the episode? <laughs> I think yeah. so. All right, we'll go with it. Wait, we never answered the other question. Yeah, we'll what was everyone's most watched movie? Well, you know what? Why don't I enter the show, and then we'll come back to it. Why don't you guys think about it, and then we'll come back to it. I, th- I, I think I, I know mine. Well, I can have... I know my most modernly watched movie. I guess, yeah, I mean, I guess that I makes any guess sense. Like, like, probably the past, the, like, 10 years. Welcome, welcome yeah. to Back Row, man. I don't know if I could go back You're, to, like... I guess I could guess, like, one since I've been casual, in, like, my teenage years, casual, and then ones that, about, like, yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm your host. Show your mouth, Adam. Adam Schwartz, this is episode 15. <laughs> if you haven't guessed, it's going to be a looser one. <laughs> a looser one. Yeah, if you haven't guessed, Jesus Christ. Uh, we got done recording two hours of Tenet, episode 14. And we were like, let's just keep going, you know? Uh, we decided earlier in the week that we wanted... Actually, we decided like two weeks ago that we wanted to do another casual episode. Uh, and it just kind of fell through. <laughs> three to two weeks in a row we just kind of got too busy and last week we were really tired after recording so we just said this week we're going to do the, the extra episode we're going to do the casual episode like we started doing when we started the podcast uh, and kind of stopped doing a little bit because i went to school and so we're back we're doing a casual episode uh we started the, we started off the show with a little long dictator thing but uh and we'll we're actually we're probably going to answer the most watch movie question next but then our main topic for the show is going to be uh, your your, the, your horror movie recommendations from our resident horror experts, uh, Blake and Nathaniel Ginger, Blake Big Cat Big Cat Blake in the Nizza. That's, That's going to be the main yes, topic. Sir. All right, have you guys had time to think about your most watched movie? Um, Tyler's here. I, go ahead, go ahead, Tyler. Oh, I was I if I have to pick one from like my childhood, it's probably The Brave Little Toaster um that's like Ooh, something that like my choice. mom like i'm just saying that, like, in I general saying, though no i know but like i, I can't like that really, i couldn't into it so like yeah and so i would say in like my later part of life um it's probably easily uh lord of the rings the fellowship mm-hmm. of the ring for sure okay mm-hmm. nathaniel you uh, mine's jurassic park yeah mine's 100 percent jurassic park and yeah, i know yeah. that because i've i've watched it multiple times as an adult and as I think I've told the story on po- on podcast, I think before, you did once before. Yeah, I actually my parents bought me the VHS uh, of Jurassic Park as a child, and I watched it so many times they had to go out and get a new VHS. So <laughs> however many that is, plus the probably, probably ten or not. so I've seen it as a, as an adult. Yeah, but yeah. Blake, did you think of yours? Um. Yeah, I don't know my one as a child. My adult one, so I mean, I'd probably say since I, the last 10 years, since I was 15, it's probably Scream, uh, to be honest yes. with you. <laughs> um, if I had to guess, a ch- yeah, that, that's so good for me to watch. I, I can watch it anytime, and it's like two hours, dude. It's like yeah. relatively long. I'll, I'll watch it once a year. Yeah. And then a childhood Asian. one, I don't know, man, maybe... I'm sure Finding Nemo's up there, Ooh. to be honest mm. with you. Yeah, I, that's probably up there for me, too, just because yeah. of how many times I watched Well, what do you got, Adam? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think I've seen Back to the Future mm. probably 20 times. Is that your dad's that's favorite movie? Wa- no, my dad's favorite movie is The Unusual Suspects. The usual suspects. Usual suspects. Sorry. <laughs> usual suspects. Uh, uh, he's not allowed to like that one anymore. He. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can like four fifths of that of that movie. Uh, not even that's a that's a Brian Singer movie. Oh yeah, is he? Can- yeah, yeah, he did kind of get canceled. Oh, he's very yeah. canceled. <laughs> yeah, 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 he's very canceled. I, I forgot about so- that. Pick a new one, Papa, Sh- Papa Schwartz. <laughs> Papa Schwartz. Get a new movie and a uh, new pair of New Balances. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, the uh... Back to the Future. Back to the Future. I watched that a lot when I was a kid because I had a, I had a friend when I was younger whose uncle um, produced it. And so he had all hmm. of, like, he always had a lot of this cool Back to the Future merch. Is, like, he had a pinball machine his, in his basement. Is his uncle Sidney Seinberg? No, it's uh, Nick Canton, I think his name is. Uh, yeah, I, was, I almost had a heart attack there. <laughs> Nick Cannon? <laughs> you, 
No, I I, I thought it was going to be Sidney Scheinberg. I was going to have to find this friend and track him down. Pulls get his life story. <laughs> yeah. Did we just lose you there? Are we still... Adam? Adam uh, yeah. Something. <laughs> uh, my pop filter muted my mic. Okay. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, Sorry, yeah, listeners. Cool. What was the last thing you guys heard? How we saw um, your buddy's friend knowing the guy who worked. Yeah, uh, and his name. Future. Oh, his uncle's name that produced it is Neil Canton. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I was talking to myself for a while because I thought you guys could hear me. Well, that's okay. Well, here we go. Here we are. Uh, Neil Canton. That was my buddy's uncle's name. So he had a bunch gotcha. of cool Back to the Future merch. He also won the, I think it was the 20th. It was either the 15th or the 20th. No, it would have been the 20th anniversary of it. Or maybe 25th. One of the anniversaries, they released the Blu-ray versions, um, all three in a box set. And he got that like mm. for free. So we basically, we watched it a lot. And then it's still a movie that I watch pretty often as an adult. I so. keep, I forgot blu-rays were a thing when you were a kid <laughs> yeah no i had blu-rays <laughs> like again we we all oh when i was a kid VHS, VHS. Uh, yeah. DVD, yeah, you know, then the you know hd disc is yeah <laughs> like an hd Spider dvd disc? hd yeah no i had hd like just right i remember when blu-ray became a thing i'm not yeah but you were still yeah. just yeah yes i remember you know, dvds i remember vhs i remember dvds and i remember when blu-ray came out and started being a big deal too no i know but yeah. there's an there's an, a thing called an hd dvd do there you know what they that distinguished is? yeah yeah so there when, was DVDs, right that's standard they, they were, and then there's hd dvds and then yeah no, no it was a it was a competitor to blu-ray to at blu -ray. the time Oh, yeah, yeah, and they were red boxes, and they said HD that on I them. don't like remember. Box that yeah, it was like uh, it was okay. like VHS versus Laserdisc or eight track yeah. versus cassette. That I do not remember. Okay. Wild, because I think because Blu-ray is Sony, and then HD DVD, HD DVD was like a, a like collaboration of like Sharp and like Samsung or something like that. Mm. They, they were like two other tech companies. Is Blu-ray gotcha. technically Panasonic? No, I that might have been what. No, that's what HD HD DVD was. It was Panasonic and Panasonic was HD, and that's yeah, and that's what wrecked their. Okay. That's why they're not in the states anymore. They got uh, they got, that killed them. Yeah, <laughs> that's why Sony will never go out of business though, because they technically own Blu-ray, everything. Yeah, hey, that's a nice little piggyback to 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 live off on though. Right, exactly. Especially when you make a game console that uses Blu-rays. That, that, yeah. <laughs> you know what's the dumbest thing ever is the PS4 Pro. Um, doesn't have oh, a 4K, have a, a 4K optical drive. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have a 4K, 4K Blu-ray player, even though Sony's the one that makes them. Yeah. But the Xbox One X has a 4K does player. Yeah. How does yeah. Sony not put a 4K player in their own console? That makes no sense to me. And but then also Super sell it to the competitor. That really money. Just, I mean, I guess because uh, yeah, I, it was a little cheaper than the Xbox One S. Maybe that's how they did it. But maybe like, it's that's just, just also like a maybe it's like a screw you to Xbox. Like not only can we beat you with our technology, but we'll beat you with technology that doesn't even have our technology, and we'll sell that to you. You know, I don't think that's actually what they do. But that's that you're right. They really honestly, <laughs> they were still outselling them even without that, probably. I don't know. I'm an Xbox guy. We're all Xbox guys. Even though we I have a PS4. Xbox, right? I have both. I, 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 you I guys, have both. I hardly I play my PlayStation. I have both. Oh, until I moved in with Tyler, I was actually more PlayStation than I was Xbox. Really? Oh, I think sure. you know yeah, I do remember that. When I first met you and Stanley, you yeah. before you guys moved in together, you were all PlayStation. I was like, I, I yeah. want to play with you, though. And then right when you and Ty moved in together is when you started playing Xbox only. Really, and we started seeing you on more. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm was primarily PlayStation, and then I got more on Xbox. Actually, you know, it was before it was before Tyler and you moved in. I remember, yeah, but I, I was remember... still I was still running everything through my PlayStation for the majority of that time gotcha. at this point. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but yeah, horror movies. Let's talk about them. I had something I was gonna say, but you know, yeah, let's just let's talk on. about it. 
let's just move on. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out, Ryan uh, Hollinger. If, if so, Nathaniel, you had, you were the one that came up with this idea for the, the casual episode. Why don't you go ahead? Yeah. Go ahead. yeah. So, Blake and I both love horror movies. I've Halloween is my favorite holiday. I'm really getting picked up in Tyler's mic. Sorry about that. I'll try and be less effusive here. But uh, I am have I. I say I always have been a big horror guy, but I was actually terrified of scary movies until I really was about a freshman or sophomore in high school. I could not watch anything. The scariest thing I'd ever seen was The Mummy until I watched, mm-hmm. like, The Shining. Um, but uh, ever, And then, like, anything that you're denied as a child or scared of, you just overindulge afterwards. So I, I dove into it, and I haven't really looked back since. But, Blake, you've always kind of grown up with horror movies right yeah um that was pretty big how anytime me and my dad would like kind of sit down and watch movies that somehow always end up being horror movies i'm sure my mom would be in the other room disagreeing but uh, <laughs> that's just kind of how it went so like uh, one of my first uh, memories of seeing a horror movie in theaters is um 28 weeks later which i think oh, is for like sure. 2006 2007 yeah so which 12 we- which we talked about last episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's one of my first memories of like going to theaters with my dad and seeing a horror yeah. movie. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But yeah, I've just always been a huge, huge horror guy. Yeah. So with that kind of uh, you know mindset and fall finally kind of kicking off here, at least it's definitely feeling like fall over here in Illinois. We were kind of talking, and I thought we would be a good time to just kind of give a our listeners maybe like a kind of little primer or a couple good. Um, horror movie recommendations for the coming fall season and i know adam you were wanting to get more into horror movies so yeah, i figured it'd be yeah, kind sure. of a good time yeah um because i've talked about this before might as well since we're kind of going through our horror backgrounds or whatever might as well worth repeating for the context of the episode but uh i was kind of like the thing where i got kind of traumatized in like the second grade uh when i was a kid like watching a horror show with my friend and it was one it was like a ghost hunter show where they reenact all the ghost huntings uh, or like, yeah, yeah. Or it was, it, mm-hmm. yeah. It, it was, it was gonna be kind of freaky, shows. dude. It, it was, it was, especially for well, how old was I in second grade? Nine. Yeah, it was. I think I was nine. <laughs> um, yeah, eight or nine. Any eight or nine year old Adam basically had a panic attack after watching one of these shows. <laughs> Never looked at horror the same way again. Was always kind of freaked out about it, uh, about it until probably when I was like sixteen, seventeen. And then I started giving horror a chance again, and and I could handle it a little bit better because I had gotten over a lot of that sure. stuff. <clears throat> um and i've i just haven't gone all the way into horror yet just because i've still kind mm-hmm. of tried to eat, ease myself a little bit but i've been wanting to more um so i have a lot that i need to watch and so you guys talk about a lot even classics texas chainsaw massacre is the one you bring up all the time nathaniel or mm-hmm. are things i need to watch yeah. so i will have i do have two movies that i would recommend and that, that we'll talk about that maybe some people have already seen but that i will talk about when we bring all of them up that uh i can talk about but besides that, those are like the only two I'm really worthy of talking about because those are one of the two, only two I've ever seen. So. Ty, you want to give your little horror background? I mean, you're not super, super into it like Ty Nathaniel or uh, Blake and Nathaniel, but you're into it, right? Yeah, not super into it, but I'm definitely down for a good scare. Uh, anytime somebody's asked me to go see a horror movie, I've never really shied away. Uh, I'm also one of those people that if you ask me to go to a haunted house, I'm probably like super down. Uh, oh, yeah. I love a haunted house. Yeah, so like, I, yeah, I just, I guess like, where i am from uh as a child or like as a teenager growing up or like going like high school like you just found like haunted houses and stuff to go to around this time like mm-hmm. it was just kind of like the thing you did um so yeah it was it was i'm i'm always down for a good scare um but yeah i like scary movies i would say i probably go more towards the like sci-fi horror than like just a regular horror film. Um, gotcha. And I think that's just because one of the first like scary movies that like I saw as a kid uh, that we'll get into is alien. Mm. Um, and that is very uh, sci-fi horror. Yeah. Um, and I think that really like set up a cool genre that we could probably get into that. I'm sure you guys will touch on it a little bit, but yeah, I, I I'm in love horror. All right. How do you guys want to start this off? Do you want to do? All right. I I mean, why don't I start? Just because, yeah. I, like I said, I only have those two movies, and then I can get those out of the way, and then you guys can kind of go full in. For sure. Um, so the two I wanted to bring up, uh, one of them is, is a, a Quiet Place. 
This Not is, bad. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a newer one. I think it's 2017 or 2018. Too. I don't remember which year exactly, but um, I think it was 2018. Yeah. So pretty recent. Uh, John Krasinski writes and directs it, right? Yep. Or yeah. He, yeah. Writes and directs it, features his wife, Emily Blunt, and then their their kids who are not as well known. So I'm not. And I don't feel like looking them up right now. They're not their actual kids. They're not their actual kids. <laughs> no, sorry. I didn't mean their actual kids. I mean, who, the, their kids in the movie. I'm sorry. Because they, oh, okay. they play husband in the movie. I meant kids in the movie, not their actual kids. Um, yeah, it's a really cool concept. It's, you know, you can't make any noise because that's, they, they can hear really, really well. Um, it's kind of the concept behind it. So the whole movie plays really well with sound, really well with silence, using it to the advantage mm-hmm. and using it to kind of scare you a lot, which watching the theater this was a great movie theater film yeah uh, i agree the with that 100 percent. the theaters yeah 100 percent. i Nathaniel, saw it uh release day nathaniel oh uh, yeah i liked it as well uh definitely did you a, see it in theaters though theaters exp- yeah 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 i did yeah, okay. i was um it was so scary that i was mad at the squeaky fan in the theater because it was yeah. like it kept <laughs> scaring the shit out of me <laughs> that that was one of those films in theater where like you wouldn't even hear people eating like popcorn and shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The movie was like exactly. just fucking silent. It just makes you hold your breath. Yeah. Great, great experience in the theater because everybody's so quiet. And even after you leave the theater, everybody's mm-hmm. still like afraid to talk. And like, <laughs> yeah, it, it was one of those movies. And so it really having that kind of theater experience made you really into it. And mm-hmm. so going back and rewatching it, that doesn't give you the same thrill as it did in the theater, just because it's not as immersive when everybody in the theater is going through it at once. Uh, but it's still really good. Still, I think it's a, a pretty good horror film. Uh, Headphones horror. with this movie are a good watch. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna have to try that next yeah. time I watch it. Because like it's it's very hard to recreate that element that you get from a theater mm. with this movie. <laughs> that's a good call. Uh, and I've tried it multiple times because <laughs> a movie like I said that's on my list and I really really enjoy it. Uh, and yeah, in like a living room setting, it's not like very good because you just kind of lose it with all the actual sounds yeah. happening. Um, so yeah, if you have a theater room, good for you. Uh, I'm I'm very happy for you. I would love to have one of those someday <laughs> in my life. Um, but yeah, if you don't wear headphones, it's great. It definitely bumps that like factor up. I'm gonna have to try that next time. I give it a watch. I think. Yeah, I, I'm gonna good. have to try that too because um, yeah. that's one of those films where I said I loved it in theaters, and I've tried to watch it like at home like two or three times and i just can't get into it dude i end up yeah close yourself into a dark room throw some headphones on let her rotate her chip next time i watch i'm gonna have to do that i'll get back to you on that time lit also i should probably just acknowledge the fact i am kind of eating a pizza in between a little bit so if i sound like i'm swallowing or eating food i probably it probably won't come up on the mic but if when i talk it sounds like that that's why oh i already slammed a whole pizza i didn't have time in between jerks Mine was pre-made, and then I just had to throw in the microwave. Yeah, my, my roommate tapped me on the shoulder after I stopped recording the first episode, and he goes, you want to order some food? I was like, yeah. Lit. And here we have pizza. All mm-hmm. right, um, mm-hmm. and then the second, second, <laughs> second film I uh, wanted to bring up is Hereditary, one we've talked about before on Pod. Um, great watch. Very psychological. Who's that director? You guys, you guys know, I'm sure. Ari Aster. Ari Aster. Ari Aster. Um, who did Midsommar and then my? Oh, I Mid- forgot Schumacher. to tell you guys. Did I tell you guys my dad watched a strange thing about the Johnsons? The strange thing no. about the Johnsons. <laughs> yeah. Holy he shit! He texted me. Let me see what his text said. Uh, he did, you, or, did he listen to that because of us talking about it on the pod? Oh yeah, 100. Yeah. percent yeah. Yeah, he said uh, the strange thing about the Johnsons. That's one messed up thirty minutes. Something you can't <laughs> uns. This short film did not have to be made. I said, haven't watched it yet. He said, don't rush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, he, so your he, dad's spot on, dude. That's something. Like did, he, as far as I, as like, far as I know, I haven't talked to him too much about his horror, but he likes horror. I think he likes Hereditary. Yeah. He he okay. heard us talk about it and watched yeah. it, and and he said he liked it. He's he's uh, pretty. Um. But yeah, great, great, great movie. Very uh, tense in parts without using a ton of jump scares. There are some, kind of, but mm-hmm. it's very yeah. good at building tension. Very, mm-hmm. um, very provocative. Good, uh, very good movie. Very good movie. Yeah. Definitely recommend. I don't know if you guys have anything else to add on to that. Those were the only two movies. For so sure. Add on to that. Predator is one, yeah. one of Blake's favorites. I haven't seen yeah. it. You haven't really? seen it? Oh, you did say that last time. Yeah. Um, right. So no spoilers. Yeah, yeah, not, not a ton to add on to those, Adam. But obviously, I'm a big advocate for Hereditary. Um, yeah. 
I would go as far to say is I think that is the best horror movie that's come out probably. I mean, I would say in the 2010s easily. Okay. I would say that. And then I'd probably Danny, have to give some more that? thought in, into the 2000s. Yeah, I think... Um... I think if, I think uh, the most effective um, horror movie of the 2010s is probably how I would phrase it. It's not my favorite. Okay. Um, I have other favorites in there that of movies that I just like more. Not because I don't think Hereditary is not effective, but Hereditary is just like so so scarring. draining. Yeah, yeah, it's, so it's draining. A, a traumatic. Yeah. It's a traumatic viewing experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, it and really is. I like that about once a year. Yeah, <laughs> but I can't yeah. do that very often on there. Yeah. And then I just think some other horror movies. I leave it afterwards, and I'm like, oh, that was so much fun. Like I'm mm. happy that that happened. Scream is like a prime example of that. Yeah, I like yeah. Watch Scream so much because yeah, it's, yeah. I'm you know with you what? Dude, for sure. You talked about tension and all that, and then how you can only handle that once a year. I'm gonna add another movie to this list. It's another one I've watched. It's The Witch, or okay, oh, the, Witch. the Witch. The movie. Yeah. The movie poster says yeah. Yeah, yeah um i think i'm trying to look up if it's still on netflix because it was at one point uh, i think it um, might be i think it might be yeah, yeah that's, that's been on there for a long time yeah i, I think the witch up. was my introduction to a24 a it is horror. on netflix right now yeah. is that a24 th- yeah it is yeah and i think that was my introduction to them um yeah very good movie very very slow burn yeah um, <laughs> It's you not too another... long. How long is it? It's only an hour 32. And it, it feels not way a lot happened. It does feel way longer than that, but a huge payoff at the end that I think makes yeah. the entire movie worth it. You sure. know what else is an A24 film? Like one of their, their very early ones is What's Tusk. That? Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> it's, it's, um, just, it's just crazy to think about that A24 started from that and like has come there. And not that that's a particularly bad movie, but it's just so different mm -hmm. from their vibe nowadays that it's just kind of funny. Well, we got an A24 film on the entropy list, uh, Green Room. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure with time, there will either be future A24 movies or past A24 movies that we were on that that list. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Uncut Gems for sure would be on there. Uncut Um, Gems, yeah. But they did Lady Bird. They did. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they, they're they did the uh, right mid nineties. I mean, yeah. No, they got a lot. Not all of it is killer, but but it's it's mm-hmm. still pr- most of it is pretty. Yeah, good. yeah so Lady Bird they're... is. Lady Bird is one of the better ones they've done. I think Lady Bird's pretty pretty solid. I like. I think A twenty four is the best production house working currently. Or at least they're mm-hmm. the hottest at the moment. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Yeah. No, I would agree with that. All right, that's my three movies done. Someone else can take it away. Uh, I can I'm, just go because mine's probably sure. gonna be shorter than both of theirs. But I think like just for movies that I think like really impacted uh, my mindset for horror um, would just be you know like these few. Most of them I probably saw when I was like more of a kid, um, but I will definitely still be down to watch them over and over again. Um, but uh, Alien, like I mentioned, is definitely one of those bigger ones. Um, that's like a movie that like I saw with like my dad, my brother, uh, when I was a kid. Uh, so yeah, that was definitely up there for like, holy shit, this is wild. I think I just, you know, shit my pants. Mm -hmm. Um, Chucky was another one that Mm -hmm. I got showed to, uh, at like a really, really young age. And like, that was like, there's something in my closet kind of scared. And then I was like, one day I just remember like sitting on the floor and I'm like, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to beat this thing because I'm not scared. It's fake. And that's when I was like, yeah, horror is great. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just like, to caveat, like, listeners, yep. we all know it's actually called Child's Play. We know. We, we understand. <laughs> but yeah, it's easier right. to call it Chucky. Correct. Because everybody knows who Chucky is. Um, the other one, when I was like a little kid, we used to go camping a lot. Uh, and a lot of those campsites would be by cornfields. And one night we got into the Children of the Corn. Uh, and I know why we want to go camping. Um, <laughs> just because uh, we would always, my parents would get the camper and then Justin and I would be on a tent. And like, Justin's not saving anybody. So, <laughs> Malachi, he wants you that's, too, Malachi. That's, so true. <laughs> that's so true. Justin um, and then uh, A Quiet Place, you mentioned, great movie, definitely one of the newer ones. Uh, Signs, I think, was just one of those other ones that just like, 
really see signs. knocked it out of the park. Signs, yeah. signs is another one. Was one as a kid, I was absolutely scared shit. Terrified. Yeah. I was so scared of it. I never even. I didn't even see it until I was a freshman in, in high school, and I had my mom and dad tell me the plot of it so that I because I was so scared by what could happen in that movie just based on the trailer. Uh, and then one of those more newer ones, uh, I would say, is uh, like The Conjuring. Conjuring was like out of this world for me. Was that was going to be my that one. That was going to be my argument for against Blake for, for best horror movie. Yeah, yeah, post twenty ten. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I would certainly say that's in the top three top, that's for top sure. Three, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's probably more. Also, it's also kind of become a classic really quick. Yeah, that, that's way like. more effective. It's very popular. That. Honestly, it's like the it's the inception of horror. Would you agree with that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would I say really yeah, out of the 2010s, it, it, you're going to do that in the, uh, the the first Insidious will probably be your okay. top two that people come say, to. That, that's like really, the, really good horror movies. Insidious is like an honorable mention for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's both it. both games won. <laughs> yep. Tiptoe <laughs> by the window. <laughs> that's one I haven't seen in a while. So good. Love that movie. They kind of frailed out towards the end. Oh, they ended up making like five or six. I haven't seen seven. any past the second. I only I saw the second one. Watched hey. the, uh, up into the third. The third one's okay. Yeah. It's watchable. Yeah. I yeah, don't know about after that, though. One? I think I'm going to add the WAP the music one. video to my list. Hilarious. To horror movies? That shit's, that shit's scary. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say that's, that's kind of like it. Um, the uh i guess for like tv series um uh god what uh american horror story uh i think up until Mm. three covenant those are really great Uh, i think those do a lot of good things and then you like coven too right you don't yeah yeah. you like anything past three no no no, no. i like coven coven's great okay um but yeah after three i don't really think what what's after three freak show yeah it was Freak. yeah i think freak show and on you don't really need to to get into first uh season is just absolutely flawless i love it it they think they do an awesome job i'm sure there's some gaps so flawless isn't the best word to use but it's really really great and it sets it up for the next couple seasons um but yeah it's really great yeah i liked american horror story uh that was kind of like that came out my freshman year of college and it was one of those ones where like the first time like the dorm hall gathered around and watched Mm-hmm. Like every episode. Remember back when people still watch things week to week and not <laughs> been like eight, all at once. ages ago. Yeah. Yeah. We uh man, what did we do for that? Oh, we used to do um uh Ash vs. the Evil Dead. Um oh, yeah. do really? we used to get together uh, yeah, we used to get together every single week. That was a, that. I would never expect that show to be a weekly gathering. Oh show. my god, it was so much fun. Um that's actually a really funny point, especially because we're talking about horror, because there was only a few shows that we did that for. And the other one just so happened to be The Walking Dead, um, which oh, yeah, yeah. would also be classified as horror. So, yeah, actually, when both of those first came out, that is those are two very good shows that uh, when they first started that we actually like gathered around for. Like, Ash vs. Evil Dead is incredible um, through and through. And especially if you get to like the uh, the the original movies. Um, yeah, Evil Dead should yeah. be could be in this conversation too. One hundred percent, and it probably should be, and it's probably gonna be more on your end of it. But um, but yeah, just incredible stuff happening in horror. There's too much to talk about. I'm gonna pass it off to you guys. I'm getting excited for fall, October, <laughs> candles, blankets. Best time of the year, man. I'm hyped. So uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think uh, popcorn. Uh, Nathaniel, <laughs> <laughs> are we gonna do? If we decided we're doing four weeks in a row of horror in October for October. Yeah, I support please. that for sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I was. I mean, sure. we could start Honestly, next we week start. for me if you I was want. about to say. Dude, <laughs> you I'd be down. I'm down. Yeah. We'll talk about for it. Sure. We'll discuss. All right. Sorry, you got popcorn, Nathaniel, and I, inter- I rudely interrupted. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. I mean, my again, horror for me is is so many things. So I think I'm probably going to do just most of these kind of off the top of the dome, and and yeah, not really, this isn't this isn't by end all by any means an end all be all list, but um, kind of like we talked about, I think it was off pod, but it's kind of been on pod too. Scream is is a huge one for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was like you talked you talked about how much you love Scream. Yeah, I love Scream. Um, it was one of the ones that I did catch at an early age. Um, Nev Campbell. I think I might have said this on pod two. Nev Campbell was my first crush as a child. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, it was Nev Campbell and Vanna White on Wheel of Fortune. So you there have you go. definitely you said this on last week's episode. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it's just it's it's great. It's a it's a good time now. If you catch it when you're a kid, it is there are scary bits to it, and even like. I can remember it's it's funny to me because I can remember when people thought this movie was scary and then scary movie came out. And and after that it people only see it as this kind of weird it's a comedy. time yeah. capsule of the nineties yeah. that and it's almost a parody in and of itself because it, it's mm-hmm. it's it skewers so many of those nineties tropes and that kind of thing. Um but again, if you're if you're new to horror or if you're um if you haven't seen it before, or you haven't seen all kind of the parodies that have come out since then, it is effective as a scary movie um overall. So um Scream's always gonna be up there for me. Um for sure. I think um The Shining. I mean yeah. that's a classic uh mm-hmm. through and through. That's one of my personal favorite movies of all time. Like that's in my top that's 10 a movie list. that I yeah, tried I, did. I personally yeah. didn't put that on the list because I knew you were gonna talk about it. <laughs> we need to. I I, I, I haven't seen that all the way through. Oh really? Have you seen wow, uh, Doctor Sleep, Adam? I know that Daniel I, has. I, no, because yeah. I I wanted to see Doctor Sleep. It looks really good. And yeah, it's on HBO and Max. Good things. But I wanted to watch The Shining before I watched that. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah Doctor Sleep's Mike Flanagan, who we've talked yeah. about multiple times on the podcast. We even talked about him earlier today. And Ewan McGregor. Mm-hmm. And Ewan McGregor, who I found out about two yeah. weeks ago, he's in Star Wars. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's Obi Wan Kenobi. To the rest of the world, everyone knows who he is. To me, I'm like, oh, this guy's a pretty good actor. I've never seen. Him. <laughs> I wonder if he's been anything huge. <laughs> what, I wonder if he's been in the Rouge? movie one. <laughs> <laughs> Another movie I have not seen yet. Plan on watching it soon, though. I had a friend listen to the podcast, and she was like, "You haven't seen Moulin Rouge?" And I was like, "Nope." She's like, "We should watch it together." And I was like, "Okay." So soon. Once yeah. my house is out of quarantine. Uh, nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, The Shining's incredible. I'm sure most people listen to this, but I'd say that's a The Shining's kind of a famous like. Even if you don't like horror, you like The Shining movie. Like mm-hmm. it's it's um, or even if you don't like horror, you'll like this kind of movie. It's it's mm-hmm. it's famous enough in its own right that I think even non horror people will go and see it. But um, it's just an excellent all around film. Nicholson's incredible in it. Uh, Shelley Duvall's incredible in it. Yeah, uh, Kubrick's at the top of his game. It's not. Um, it's not. You know, the a jump scare movie by any means. Not. It's all just about kind of this family crumbling under the pressure of this oh, this hotel. But yeah, um, yeah, it's 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 an incredible film. Um, let's see, what else have I got? Um, love Texas Chainsaw. I mean, I feel like I'm just doing like I can just do classics, you know, and mm-hmm. and that. Um, will be on there, but I mean they're classics for a reason. Um, Texas, uh, that was that actually is probably to me the most r- recent movie that's probably going to be on my list. I actually only saw that last year for the first time, um, but I'd seen the remake. I just hadn't seen the original. Sure. Um, right. But I just think what Toby Hooper can do in that movie and how he shoots everything's so kind of naturalistic so almost almost documentarian um mm-hmm. is just so effective and, and the fact that the whole film takes place in the daytime the entire yep. thing is just is that goes is, a long way in horror and, it, and it's and it's and it's remembered as kind of this gory horrific film but it's almost essentially bloodless like there is very mm-hmm. little actual like you you think like hostile levels of violence are in that film and it's really not. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's definitely up there for me. Um, what else, have we, what else should I kind of go through? Here, let me ask you this then. Um, if yeah. you had to just put one movie out there to, to, to have people kind of kick off like the fall festivities, right? Like spooky season, quote unquote, what horror sure. movie would you recommend on that? I think you could, um, I do a one two punch. I do the original Halloween and Halloween last year or the two years ago or something. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. Just to kind of really get you in the mood. If you want to do like fall or uh, trick or treat, trick or treats, I think is a great little Halloween movie. Um, mm-hmm. If you want to go something more like that. Um, if you're just like, hey, what's just a great scary movie that I can do? 
I I have a personal connection to Insidious. I think that's a great example of just like a lean and mean, don't have to think about it too hard, but really effective mm-hmm. uh, horror film that I think balances jump scares with tension really, really mm-hmm. well. Um, Exorcist. I I, pers- I personally don't get scared at the slasher movies, at the alien movies, at the um, you know the monster in, in yeah. the closet or in the or in the deep movies. Ghost movies freak me out, and like uh, demon and, shit. And, and and yeah, and demon exorcism movies g- uh, genuinely freak me out. So um, how do you feel about uh, like Paranormal Activity? Uh, I actually think paranormal activity is really effective and is like is should be kind of considered you know it's really important to the to the genre. Yeah. Um, Dude, it, yeah, that has, has it been ahead. aped a million times since then? Absolutely, but right, the first right, one, right, right. the first one was a phenomenon and was and was so for a reason. I think. Yeah, yeah. Seeing any of those, if you were old enough to catch any of those in theater, that shit was like another level, ex- next level experience. Yeah, it really was. Because, I mean, it's the movie now is obviously just 150% jump scares, right? Yep. Um, but it was just one of those things where you're sitting there in a theater and, like, you would literally hear people, like, well, it's, screaming and stuff like that. Yeah, it was, it was it crazy. It's found that such a simple device is that, that just numbers counting on the screen is scary because mm-hmm. you're just waiting for them to stop. Mm-hmm. And, like, because that's when you know something's going to happen. Yeah. And that's it's such a, an effective little device that there's just no one had come up with. It. A, a paranormal activity is the better film than Bear, Blair Witch Project, but Blair Witch Project had the bigger and better marketing than Paranormal mm-hmm. Activity did. And I'm happy we got Blair Witch first because without mm-hmm. it, you wouldn't have Paranormal Activity. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, when you look at the found footage genre, uh, Paranormal Activity might be the the one that kind of. Stands I think that right. takes the I think that takes the cake just for because yeah. that's one of the highest grossing movies of all time or, based off their budget. Yeah, most profitable right. movies of all yeah. time. It is. Yeah, it beat so, Blair Witch. They um, got a, so. They have a shit ton of stuff, on. and that's why they yeah. end up making six or seven sequels, right? Or yeah, first, exactly. I don't know. The first two I could under the first three I can understand because the first one is you learn. A, um obviously Spoilers. the demon is yeah i mean this movie's been out for 15 years <laughs> if, if you haven't seen this then i, I could tell you um but yeah the first one you understand right the demons after the the wife or whatever and the second one it goes into oh every time oh, there goes nathaniel <laughs> bye oh, and we're back all good man um forgot where we're at but yeah so the first one like i said you realize the the demons after the wife and then the second one you realize well technically it was after her sister right but it had to they end up burning the picture of her so it yep they transfer the curse and then the third one which i think is probably one of the better ones that's when the two sisters are children yeah and i haven't seen the third one the third one's not that that's probably my favorite one and then after that i can't i i I don't know how to tell the story after that, like to include the sure. fourth. Like I don't know where they come in. You know what I mean? But yeah. the first three yeah. are pretty precise. Yeah, I think uh I think for sure. I think they're they're kinda up there. Yeah. Um I'm trying to think what else is kinda on uh, on there for me. Um oh you do a couple. And I'll I'm sure I'll come up with like a couple, maybe like a little yeah. bit more offbeat ones or something that I can kind of yeah. recommend that maybe most folks haven't heard of. Yeah, so I mean, I probably put a little more thought into this than, than everybody else here, but mine are still kind of off the dome. Um, but I wanted to at least set kind of like a theme for mine. So what I wanted to do was just to kind of start off the horror season. Uh, I usually watch like home invasion movies to start it. So I picked it. And I think a big spin on that was because I watched Ready or Not last week, which isn't really home invasion, but kind of, you know, it's kind of that yeah, same absolutely. premise nonetheless. Um, so the three that I picked for Home Invasion are probably some of my three favorite Home Invasion movies. Um, one is The Strangers. Um, that's probably my Strangers. favorite um, Home Invasion movie. And that's from 2007. Let me see. I got some notes on that one. I can pull it up on Wikipedia. Excuse me. So that one's from 2008. Excuse me. Um, and that's directed by Brian Bertino. Um, and the cast on that one, it's got a few people in there. Liv Tyler, you'll probably know who that is. And I actually think they have 
like a, ca- a small cameo from a guy who's in like Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I can't yeah, Glenn Howerton's in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah he's, he's his friend. He's like walks in and yeah. he kills him. Um, but yeah, that that's one of those movies where I have a good memory of being with some friends in maybe like middle school and like watching that at my friend's house, like when we shouldn't have been up, like at a sleepover, you know what I mean? And we watched yeah. that yep. and we watched three movies that night. We watched, I pulled all fucking nighter. We watched this, we watched Vacancy, and we watched The Hills Have Eyes 2. And that's just a day like I remember. Um, And that's probably like 12 years old when we were doing this, 13 years old. Uh, But yeah, so that's one of my my, uh, more recommended home invasion movies. That's probably the best one I can think of off the top of my head. Another one I have Nathaniel brought up was Year Next. Um, And that's a pretty good home invasion movie. It's kind of a different twist on it right where the people are breaking that. in and yeah that, that yeah. one's good though that's like a your next to me is like a more refined ready or not if you kind of see what very I'm going similar after. vibes yeah. yeah absolutely i would um i yeah, would pick your next the over is, ready or not the thing is though i feel like your next works if you've seen a lot of horror films or if you've seen a few horror films i think you can come into ready or not with not seeing very many mm-hmm. horror films have a better mm-hmm. time than you mm-hmm. both than in your next mm-hmm. if that makes yeah. sense a- a- absolutely and and spoiler warning I, I i think that statement's very strong because in your next you come to terms to realize like hey this isn't like every other home invasion movie like this girl can actually fight yeah. you know yeah, what i mean exactly. so like that's the twist um but yeah so that was my second one on there and that was from 2011 that's one i remember seeing in theaters uh pretty good that one's directed by an Adam Wingard, and I don't yep. know what else he's done. Do you know anything he's else? He's done. Uh, he did the new Blair Witch, the um, oh, the okay. remake, and then he yeah. did. Um, he's had a couple of VHS um, segments as well, yeah. and then he did something else. Oh, he I did a uh, Death him. Note. The Death yeah, Note I remember, movie. Um, but there was something else he did that I was like, "Ooh, I really liked that." Uh, uh, the guest. I love the guest too. Okay, yeah, that is his. Uh, yeah, so I did that one, and then my last one, um, which is probably, it's not my favorite. I think uh, The Strangers is my favorite of these three, but I think the best film of these, uh, and it has a shit ton to do with Mike Flanagan. It's a home invasion movie, but it's Hush. And I think Hush. that's probably the best home invasion movie you can probably see right now. Uh, just because I think Mike Flanagan's a really, 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 really good director. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd agree with that. With the camera, yeah, and then um, with the protagonist being death is actually very interesting in a home invasion. Like you, you never see yeah. that. You know what I mean? So that just brings like a totally completely different something element. unique. Yeah. So yeah, those are uh, those are kind of my three. And just to kick it off, I usually do home invasion, like I said. And then from there, we'll probably jump into some slashers and stuff later on down the road. But those are kind of some quick ones. They're all pretty short run times too, like an hour, half hour, 40 minutes where you can kind of blaze through them. Um, you got any comments on any of those, Nathaniel? Uh, I'm a big fan of all those movies for, yeah. for the most part. Yeah, Home Invasions, um, they're some of the more fun ones. I think Strangers, I think you're right, Strangers is probably my favorite one out there. That's another one that kind of, when it came out, was a little bit of a, of a phenomenon in its own right too. I feel like everyone i knew took their girl to go see the strangers because it was like mm-hmm. that classic like you're both scared she's gonna like yeah yeah your kind of thing like that uh-huh. was the move right uh-huh. um, yeah that's a and that that scene where Liv tyler's smoking in the living room and you see the guy walk in behind her mm-hmm. stare at her and then just walk back out of frame again is mm-hmm. just everyone's worst fear in yeah. their entire life yeah um and i it's one of those things it's that concept that's so simple like i'm shocked it took it er, that long for that for someone to do that and put it on right film. it gets right. crazy right um, but yeah and i was kind of i was kind of looking through and seeing um some other stuff that i think maybe some folks hadn't seen before or something like that that i could i could recommend um one of them that i got on here is it follows um, which came out a few Ooh, years that's ago. That's one I have seen. That's yeah. A big, do you, um, how do you like that, Adam? Um, 
I had it really hyped up for me from things I heard from people that I like uh, watch on YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah, that'll um, do it sometimes. And and it's not, and I I still really liked it, but uh, it wasn't as good as I thought it was mm-hmm. going to be. But I still really liked it. Thought it was like it did build up dread almost. Yeah, just mm-hmm. always seeing this person in the background and at the same pace slowly just move in. Mm-hmm. Um, don't always yeah, agree it's... with the. Dis- the decisions in the movie that the characters some of the characters make and i feel like i would have found other ways out of it but that's just horror movie stuff you kind of have to get over right yeah it's it's another one that i um it's not my favorite but i i like it almost as a um for its style mm-hmm. as, as much too it's a, it's got a really unique aesthetic style that i really enjoy and then i mm-hmm. i just think the concept's kind of is is fun and effective yeah uh, yeah but it's not one that I it's not one that I ever like went home and I'm like, man, that was so scary or anything. Yeah, like no, 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 not at all. It's, it's a solid movie in and of itself. Yeah. Uh, one that I did have on a higher bone here that I thought was scary when I was seeing it was Don't Breathe. Um, hmm. OK, which yeah. came out a few years ago as yeah. well. Yeah, I uh, watched that one. That was kind of one. a kind of a reverse home invasion where you're mm-hmm. actually uh, you're following um, the main characters who are invading someone else's home, and then it turns out that they just invade the worst person in the world's uh, <laughs> home. Yeah, right, right. And, and um, I just think it, that was really effective. That was from um, Fede Alvarez, who also did the reboot of Evil Dead, which in and of itself is a pretty good movie too. I which think. hot take on that, really quick? That outside of the 2018 Halloween is the best modern remake. Uh, I don't disagree with that. Actually, that's a I, yeah, I would, maybe it's not a hot take, but that's my stance for sure. Yeah, um, that and I might even put it above Halloween. I yeah, I really like the Halloween, but I <laughs> a also lot of, a lot of really people like, do, dude. Yeah, I really like do. the Evil Dead one too. Um, yeah, both of those are are, are great. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, those are kind of just some that I had off the top of my head, really. Like I said, I, so I would gotta, talk yeah, I, with anyone all day, every day. <laughs> I I got a question for you guys. Um, What's up? So, so this is both recommending movies to me or just someone in my position, but like, what would you recommend someone like me who's just getting into horror? Like, what do I, what are the, cla- what are like the things I need? What are the movies I need, the horror movies I need to watch? Hmm. Yeah. Like you can get I mean, into horror, you have you have so many options, of course, because you go horror, yeah, you go back. It it depends. But like, I mean, what are the fundamental? I'd say exorcist, exorcist, or for me, like this would be kind of like your your list if you wanted a good base. My 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 classes. horror movie starter kit. Give me my horror yeah, movie starter kit. Um, so, I would say Exorcist, mm-hmm. Alien, for sure. Throw Jaws in there just for the, your creature feature movie. Um, you got to put the original Halloween in there. Original Halloween, absolutely. The Thing. Ooh, Psycho. Yeah. Psycho. Psycho would be up there, yep. Um, yeah. And th- these are all much older films. Um, right. I-, I think if you had to go something kind of remotely new, um, and I know we talk about it a lot, but I think Scream, I think if you can understand Scream for what it is, you'll be able to understand horror in a much more in-depth analysis. Yeah, I think um, absolutely. I I I I would want to get those kind of the psychos, the Halloweens, and the and the like, even a um, culture guys. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but the 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 slasher classics. I would yeah. get those three out of the way first before I did Scream. Yeah, um, absolutely. For kind of a maximum experience, but absolutely. Scream's definitely on the list. Poltergeist, I would think too, is kind of the quintessential haunted house movie. And those are kind of everything. Those are kind of the ones that I would say are like your foundations. Everything that really comes after that, that like Blake said, there's been a ton of stuff after that. Mm-hmm. But everything that kind of does that almost builds off of those ones, um, or or builds off concepts introduced in those. And that and this is by not and this is by no means saying that all of those movies that those are where they started from or anything like that. Because um, obviously horror is steeped in literature and everything and yeah Mm -hmm. um like the basis of film but they are all kind of quintessential big examples of hollywood horror movies from kind of like the last few years and and that's the thing horror is so subjective um to some people 
Well, and to some people, I would say to well, yeah, most well, people. It's psychologically like different things scare different yeah, people. What I find scary, right, is that Tyler's not going to find scary. And what Tyler yeah. finds scary, Adam might Some not people are scared scary. of spiders. Some people aren't. Some people are. Yeah. Scared. And I some mean, like, you can. Eight legged freaks. You can make that exact. <laughs> that exact list from with movies from like the 2010s too like you replace, for sure you replace your scream with with like a ready or not you replace your your sight your psycho with a, a, the strangers or a halloween with the strangers you you mm-hmm. replace exorcist with the conjuring or insidious um mm-hmm. you know throw hereditary on there as well you can i would you love to do, look in sorry go sorry I'm if you want to do um <laughs> that's okay if you want to do an alien um i mean you could do something like life or um you know uh another like event horizon there's another yeah. kind of more modern uh sci-fi um cult classic out there um but yeah there there's pandorms but, in there that's one pandorms the first one? Bat yeah. Bonded on. oh yeah. yeah yeah pandorms a really fun one too um but yeah there's there's always kind of each generation's like foundational ones i would say almost what were you that. gonna say adam I was going to say, I would love to look into and like almost like research the historical evolution of horror, like where it started and to where it is today, and just see well, how different things start with shit like a racer like head. I, um, yeah. in college and undergrad, I wrote my honors thesis on kind of the pillars, what I, I ended up calling like the pillars of fear, which were kind of these three areas of horror that you see a lot in fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and that's fear of, or, um, fear of the supernatural fear for the body and fear of the location. And so a lot of that, you're, you're Guillermo del Toro actually breaks it down even simpler, which is that horror just becomes things that are not supposed to be and are, and things that aren't mm. supposed to, uh, th- and things that are supposed to be and aren't. So mm. it's, that, that's, um, that's honestly so simple, but yet so beautiful i don't know what it is but yeah i like that a lot um so and that can be as simple as like um you know a a a ghost is an example of something that is not supposed to be there but is and we find that unsettling or um you know it when you someone goes into a room and they set down their phone and then they turn around and then they come back to it and their phone is missing that's something that um isn't uh, it that you know is supposed to be there but isn't um, mm-hmm. and that's that's all it is really uh, um when you come down to it but it's everything kind of builds off of off of that i'm sorry i kind of went on a little bit of a rant there boys but adam oh, was just you. talking about kind of like what the basis was and um, yeah you can no, see I, those kind of elements through a lot of it i, lo- I love when you talk about your days in film school <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great but yeah i um I love horror. I love I love movies. I love I love these conversations, guys. So yeah. let's keep having them. And I, I would go as far as to say I think with any film, when you're kind of going with a blind eye, it's better than you expect is great. But I think horror is yeah. so much better that way. Where, yeah, for example, cool. like where Adam's saying, "Oh, I saw it files." She's like, "Oh, it's it's kind of cool," but it was really like gassed up to me from a lot of friends, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I can certainly see how that movie it doesn't that movie is it's even hard to describe what that movie is about to somebody and make it appealing right yeah like once you tell somebody what's that about and they're like yeah. okay well like that yeah. sounds stupid it sounds like it's just an std that's you know <laughs> yeah, what i mean yeah. or like that's what people like meme about it yeah yeah um but that's one of those clap. movies exactly <laughs> um, but that's one of those movies that um <laughs> that's one of those movies that i i saw in theaters like just random right i wanted to go to movie theater one time with me and um my ex-girlfriend of mine and it was like, okay, let's see. It follows. Like, I didn't really know what it was about, but it was a horror movie that was out. I'm a huge horror guy. And we sat in and kind of went in blind. And I was like, oh, this is pretty fucking dope. You know what I mean? And I think yeah. horror, you, you get a lot of films. Like, it's once you start reading reviews and talking to people because it's so subjective, like, that can just completely disorient your view on a movie for horror. So I think a lot of times you just got to go in just straight fresh mind you know what i mean and, and see what and see what's going see what it's going for um haunting of hill house i'll say it i've said it oh, once yeah. i'll say it a million times again that's <laughs> a 
insanely good series. Probably, I think, the best written series in a long, long time. I would say that. I haven't watched too many horror TV shows, but I mean, I I would certainly say that. There's a handful of American horror story seasons that are good, though. Tyler said that earlier. Yeah. There's there's a handful of them that are good. Um, But but I don't think any of them come close to Haunted Hill. Yeah, I agree. Haunting Hill House, I think, um, got slept on by a lot of people and continues to this day. But that's, again, Mike Flanagan, um, who we've kind of talked and brought up a lot but he's just a really really good example of, of a modern day horror filmmaker um ooh, what was that one the second annabelle that's a really good one from mm, a few years creation ago yeah yeah that's uh, the okay yeah. let, let me ask you this so since we're on like that that conjuring universe mm-hmm. um what do you rank those films or what, give me your uh, top three last none none is trash <laughs> have you seen uh, the newest annabelle no I haven't either. I, I heard it was horrendous, though, but that's why I was just curious. Did, yeah, I haven't seen the original. Hear the, the news, like, this was like a week or two ago, but that Annabelle escaped the. Yeah, I looked life. into it. Yeah, 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 I did. Yeah. Yeah. Her, yeah. Her house? I looked into it. It's fake. What? But um, It's fake? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I assumed, yeah. but like. Uh, yeah, I think they, I think they like moved to her or something like that. And that's oh, okay. It was. Um, but, okay. Uh, I figured it was something bullshit like that but that yeah. was so fun yeah so dead last in conjuring universe is the nun the, that i've seen haven't seen annabelle mm-hmm. one haven't seen annabelle three okay and then i think it's probably haven't seen conjuring two so i can't put that on there um okay. so what does it leave me with annabelle creation i guess and then the conjuring yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean I, i've seen them all I except annabelle about... three um but I, I think you're spot on for sure i think it's tough, man. I actually think Annabelle Creation can give the first Conjuring a run for its money. It I can. think Annabelle Creation is really good. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's the. It's more enjoyable for the horror fans. Like, yes, for, it's for, it's I, more for, scary. Yeah, for us, uh, quote unquote, think, right? Yeah, but I think Conjuring is more accessible if you're coming into horror for the first time, and is another one of those. That's another one of those like flagpole tentpole. Like, if you're yeah, twenty tens horror. horror. For yeah, sure. if you're new yeah. to war, this is a great example of a of a of a, a genre of a of period or anything like that. I'd say yeah. Saw, Saw two, the first Saw. Um, yeah, I I that film also is, I'm very fond of because we're gonna is, get into the the torture porn. <laughs> ah. Hey, we'll go in it there. Comes a little back, it comes back. We'll go down that road. No, um, <laughs> but the first the down first Saw is really not. Now. First Saw is really not that bloody. Um, no, or, it's or anything that it, the later ones become, but it is a really kind of just effective, mean, in your face kind of little movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I was trying to think of some other ones too. Loved ones. Did you ever see that one that came out a few years ago? I don't think I have. That's a that's an Aussie one. Um, it's about this girl that kidnaps a guy on their prom night, and uh, her and her dad want to torture him until he becomes her boyfriend forever. But that was hmm. a pretty, uh, pretty good one. I, I can recommend that one. Yeah. Uh, did you ever see Kill List? Two. I have not. No, I have not. That was a, that was another one um, out of England a few years ago. That was um, really kind of effective. It's, it follows a hitman who is sent to kill people, and he starts to think that he he kind of starts to think that they're they might be pedophiles. But then he hmm. starts to think that there may be a kind of a conspiracy behind who he's being sent to kill. Um, and it gets kind of just more horrific from there. Um, it's pretty interesting as well. Uh, but yeah, those are some a couple of different options for you guys out there. If you're into kind of all <laughs> that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think I got anything to follow up on that. Um, I mean, we're already almost at an hour. So like, yeah. No, yeah, I would say, I would say, yeah. Wrap it up. This Brand is going to be probably the cool. first of many different casual episodes we do about horror. I'm sure we're going to do some in the future. For sure. Um, let's. You guys want to do a horror movie next week? I kind of really want to do one now that we. I dude, about I say it. we jump straight into it, man. From let's now go. till the we last decided. We, Sunday, we whatever decided. of October. Yeah. What are we? What are we, what are we feeling? Let's just do it live right now on Hot. Who cares? Do you want to do something older, like an OG movie, or do you want to do something like kind of modern? whatever you, you guys choose for me i i am i am educate me for horror please enlighten me okay um i'm leaving it to you in the page. 
Uh, well, what do you find scary, Adam? Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, can, are you answer that then? Yeah, what's your you, favorite? Are like, you more of a like a ghost or an uh, a slasher or an alien or an exorcism? Guys, or? A lot of shit scares me. Okay, I didn't start watching <laughs> horror until I was 17, <laughs> 16, 17. So yeah. So, but what's yeah, your uh, preference, though, like, of your of your subgenre of horror? The thing is, I really don't. Ha- I haven't seen enough to say I have a preference. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's he's, he's, he's like a blank slate, bud. We can give him anything. I am a blank slate. Make me scared as shit. Um. Oh, well, you could just do. Yeah. You could... Something. I say you'd probably do something somewhat modern. I probably try to say. Maybe like two thousands plus. All right. Do you um, want to do like a a conjuring or a? I have seen the or conjuring. strangers. I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah. Have you seen? Um, have you seen the strangers? I've not. No. I mean, I would go that, or even if you wanted to, kind of on the subject of home invasion. Actually, I say we go with this one now that I'm thinking of it out loud. Have you seen High Tension? Ooh. I said we do high tension. <laughs> okay, high t- I'm a, I'm in on high tension. We can yeah. do that. I've never seen it. Uh, I don't know. A, I don't know where we're gonna find it. <laughs> I don't know either. Yeah, but like that, that might be something that's on like a Tubi or yeah, or something like you know what I mean. Let me see. Yeah, from 2003. Yeah, it is on Vudu and Tubi. Oh, fair. oh, it's fair. also on Shutter, so I have it. You said it's on Voodoo, with, so it's gonna be on Voodoo with ads, obviously. Trying to give me your shutter and to, login and Tubi with ads as well. Trying to give me your shutter login. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it. Right. <laughs> you want to? Do you have give it, uh, give it, give it to me. Tyler I'm hot right now. Do you have Tubi or a Voodoo account? I can get one. Yeah, I have Voodoo, so I can just give you my account, and then if it's oh. free streaming oh. on there, um, that's fine. It's on Voodoo free. Uh, you know what? You can only rent it on Voodoo. It's on Voodoo free with the ads. Okay, and that's fine. Like I said, you can either you log can in there or just $4. go on Tubi. You are on okay. You know what? We'll figure this out off. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> we'll but off pause. All right. I mean, we're doing high tension. We, we have that. we obviously we have ways to watch it. So. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We could do high tension. That's uh. Read this description here. Best friends Marie and Alexia decide to spend. I can't believe I didn't think of that one. That Alexia's on parents on secluded home invasion house. right off the top. But of on the night. Of their arrival, the girl's idyllic giveaway getaway turns into an endless nightmare of horror or night of horror. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's uh, Alexander Aha, part of the Splat Pack, two thousand and three, New French mm-hmm. Extremity. Mm-hmm. Let's get yurted. <laughs> Damn, this looks intense. I see a bloody girl on screen. On letterbox, just very beat, beat, beat up. Yeah. Wow, All right, well, I can't believe have it. I did not know that Ready or Not was made by Radio Silence. That's so crazy. And they're and they're doing the new Scream film. Sorry, this is also more, almost an off off pod topic. But <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> uh, if you're new to horror, you can watch Ready or Not. It's done by a group of filmmakers who are collectively known as Radio Silence. They also did some of the uh, segments for VHS, which, which we've talked about a lot. But they yeah, are. I think we talked about it a little bit last pod, actually. Yeah, and, they're, sorry, they are. Heard. They are now making Scream 5 with Nev Campbell and most everyone back. So I think they're a good uh, example to kind of take on that legacy. Uh, Wes Craven being, again, one of the kind of titans from back in the day. And uh, happy for them. So Yeah, cool. All yeah, right. high tension. Well, I'm in. I'm down. I'm excited. Let's do it. All right. You're... So high tension it is, ladies and gents. Uh, I will go ahead and... I need to add that into the episode 14. But that's not your concern, listeners. Uh, please share the podcast. Uh, please share with a friend, a family member. Uh, who else could they share it with, Nathaniel? An acquaintance, possibly. Uh, maybe Ooh, like maybe a peer. Yeah, maybe they take a cab this week and they just like, hey, bro, oh, or an no. Uber. And they're like, hey, chuck us the ox. Oh, and then they maybe. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, just play it with uh, no consent. Just say, hey, can I yeah. play something really quick? And, uh, and then, just let them know, then, and then be like, "Hey, you like movies? Because these guys yeah. like movies. You should give them a <laughs> give them like a follow. Movies. Chuck yeah. us a like, or a five star review, or a five star review, and I'll talk about you. 
if that if that happens to you, give us a five star review and tell me about it, and then I'll read it. There you go. Uh, if you want to follow the show, go ahead and do so on Twitter at Banter Row. On Instagram, it's at Back Row Banter Pod. Our YouTube is just Back Row Banter. And then if you would like to contact us for any comments, concerns, questions, your your movie reviews, or movie suggestions, you can do so at Back Row Banter Pod at gmail.com. Blake Holder. Yes, sir. Where can the horror fans find you at, sir? Uh, letterboxed, man. So that's going to be Blake Holder. Uh, Holder, not Holden. Somehow, every time I get mail, it always has an N instead of an R at the end of my name. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can find me on there detailing some horror stuff. And I'm glad it looks like we're about to run like seven or six straight horror movies. I think we <laughs> I'm, so is... I'm, I'm not mad about this. I'm all on board, man. All right. Tyler? Uh, I Twitch, uh, El Trabajo 87, E L T R. A B A J O eighty seven, uh, and then uh, you can find me at Insta, Letterbox, and uh, Twitter. Uh, that's Tyler Vidalis, V I D A L E S. Wow! And you can find me at Letterboxd at N S Gingrich, and at Twitter at N S Gingrich, and at Instagram at Nathaniel G ninety two. How do you spell that, Nathaniel? Uh, spell uh, with an, an IEL. IEL. With an IEL? That is okay. correct. Just making sure. I wonder if people, if there are people out there that maybe think my actual handle is Nathaniel G92 spelled with an IEL. <laughs> like all <laughs> of <laughs> like, oh, well, out. Spelled with an IEL. <laughs> I, might have to, I might have to take that now. You might just have to take spelled with IEL. <laughs> I think that'd be good. All right. And uh, if you want to find me, I'm on Twitter. I'm at Am Schwartzy. And on Letterboxd, I'm at Am Schwartzy. Those are intertwined. And I should probably change those soon to H, I think. I might do that this week if I have time. And remember, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitch, I stream a lot more than Tyler. Stream, I, I streamed for the first time the other night uh, back at school. So I'm going to start doing that more often. Especially, we need to talk about this, Tyler. Have you seen the COD gameplay? I didn't hear what you said. I saw your mouth. You I said, said I, I have. have. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have, yeah. Do you want to talk about yeah. this real quick? We, we, have we can. Time. I mean, we don't have to. Um, we can get to another time. Dude, why just, don't we just I, talk about it? Let's talk about it off pod. That's fine too. All I'm saying is that I I bought a, a a different game to play so that I can have a break from Call of Duty before I have to get into another Call of Duty. So smart. Yeah. Smart. Yeah, but I'm uh Aish on Twitch. It's A Y Y S H. I think that's all we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Please go ahead and watch High Tension for next week if you want to get in on a movie review. It's going to be a good time. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Spooky. We'll catch you guys next week for High Tension. We'll BRB. Be excellent to each other and BRB. 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 Here it goes. <laughs> there he is. What's up, Craig? You dumb bitch. Craig. Craig. I'm a big Craig, Craig fan. Craig. Aren't we all Craig fans? Well, technically, it's Craig. You know what? I don't think Jark gets enough credit. Jark <laughs> is our backup. Oh, thanks, Jark. Jirak. Recording. G Rock.